Hey guys, Darren here with a box review of 1992 Pro Set Power. This is this is kind of the the high high watermark for Pro Set. While I think their 90 and 91 designs are the best designs they ever created, their 1992 Pro Set Power cards are the, the fanciest cards. These are cards that are kind of like the, the precursor to Select, and I think they're a lot better than Select. Select being the card set that Score would eventually create. Um, these had that kind of quality of, well, they were kind of like a cross between uh, Score's Pinnacle and Select brands. It's kind of like a, a mashup. And I think that this card really shows the Pro Set was ready to stand alongside companies like Score at the higher end. They really dropped the ball in 91, but 92, I think they pulled it off. The card set is about as simple as it gets. So basically the card itself is a full color shot of the player with a, a faded background, uh, red text down at the bottom, and then a really nice logo with some gold foil up there at the, the top corner. And then on the card back, it's a little bit of a write-up about the player and a big shot of, of the player. And I think the, yeah, it just talks a little bit about the player. It's not about the actual shot itself. It looks really good. Um, still kind of a, a niche product, but still it was, you know, for, for what they were trying to do, they were trying to get to that next step. And this was, this was an impressive move for, for pro set to make the card set. What actually is the most interesting thing about the card set is the fact that the way that they laid out the, the players was deliberate. Warren moon is card. Number one, Mike Horan is card. Number two, Bobby Hebert, number three, and then you have, uh, Jim Harbaugh at four. You have Sean Landetta at five, Bobby Brister at six, John Elway at seven. Are you noticing something? They, they put the players on their, their equivalent card numbers. And where this gets interesting is, so obviously when you start to get into the 40s and 50s and 60s, you're running out of players. And so you do get a lot of players who actually do show up. But like here we got... Um, we got Mike Kroll at 51 and then Vaughn, let's see, uh, I think I'm missing, okay, I'm missing card 52. But um, I guess in the in the low series, uh, why do I have Mike Singletary? Oh, wow. Okay, well, I uh, let me check really quick. Here I am on the fly realizing that I've got a, a mislocated number. Okay, so I'm actually missing an extra card. I didn't realize that. Uh, well, here I have another uh, Mike Singletary. Um, wish I had had that about a, a month ago. I know a place that would have been perfect for it. Um, so at any rate, where it gets interesting is when you get to the end of the 90s, uh, uh, Jim Kelly is at, at uh, double zero, but then you start over again. So Michael Jackson, uh, Steve, Cri uh, Steve uh, Christie, uh, Tim Rosenbach, Brett Favre, Jeff Fiegels, they all get their chance. And so you get this really cool, this really cool quality of the card set where you get multiple opportunities for players to show up um, with their their uh, their actual jersey number, and then they they kind of lump everybody together. So you have Leroy Hart, Hart at 33, Darren Lewis 33, Reggie Cobb at 34, Steve Bouchard 34, Marion Butts 35, Pritchard, um, Dexter Carter, and then Aeneas Williams all at 35, and so they they went through pretty much through the numbers and then they just up in the 200s they just threw everybody in and said well we're just going to go number by number and it's it's funny to see how they laid it out it's so much fun they actually had fun with this random assortment of players this is the first time that random assortments of players has meant something and I really do tell, I, I really can tell you that it is so much fun to go through and see the players actually in their jersey number order. That idea, I don't know why nobody had done that before and why hardly anybody's done that since. It does get a little tricky. So 21, they, they didn't have one. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't, but they didn't. So they threw Dan McGuire in there and there have been very few cases where they had to replace uh, a player. Um, but it just, it adds something to the, to the card set experience that is so, so cool. And then they, they do have draft pick rookies, but this is late in the run. So that means that you get to see them in their actual uniforms. 
and these are some of the best looking cards for these these rookies they're not special on the front there's nothing unique about the the draft pick rookies on the front of the card but on the card back they look very different so the regular cards look like this and then let's see where where do the rookies start and we go to actually it's okay it's right here so here's the difference tim harris versus jason hansen and so that is the difference that the rookie cards have a very very different very impressive card back otherwise they look the same as the regular cards in the set which is a great move it really allows the these players to come through looking looking impressive so yeah it's i just i love i love the whole concept of the set how it was created to me this is this is one of the jewels of 1992. it's an overlooked jewel because you just don't there, there's very little reason to to really uh, care about it because it didn't have much of a history that's about it they did have one insert set and it it was the combos so they have sam mills and von uh, von johnson um, this is in hollow foil and then you have Roderick Thomas and Keith McCants, and then also uh, Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith. So these these cards have, uh, these are really not, if you're not gonna have very many inserts, I think that they did a good job with the few, very few inserts that they included. With Pro Set, there was a lot of, of um, growth they were gonna have to go through, and just the 93 Pro Set power is almost a completely different set in so many ways. They also had a tendency to have these, These. this is not the actual Emmett Smith card. This is a, a send away for, I think it's a contest for a, an Emmett Smith, a special Emmett Smith release. And in the, in the box, I got four of these. So they came up quite often. They, they're very distinctive and they are identical on the card front to the actual card. I mean, in every way they're identical card back looks a little bit different i think we can all agree that let me get my fingers out of the way i think we can all agree that there is a very different uh big difference on the back but the reason i have the emmett smith card sitting here is because these are the doubles of note i got emmett smith emmett smith emmett smith emmett smith that's right five doubles of emmett smith six total and then i got jerry rice so um surprisingly these were the only true stars i got you know other stars like you know, I got Warren Moon and a couple of, of players, um, Ron, uh, Ronnie Lott, The Fridge, uh, Michael Irvin, a few other guys who were, who were somewhat of note, but nobody at the real star level. So I only got those, and it was amazing how many times I was pulling the Emmett Smith cards out. I don't know if they, if they overproduced. I assume that the, I would have heard about it by now, but it's just, it's weird that... I have, I think, some triples, or uh, I guess quadruples, three copies, three uh, doubles of them. Here I got five. That's That one player came out uh, really, uh, really prolifically. So that was a, a weird thing. But let's get to the set. So I got within 13 cards of the set. I thought I was within 12 until I discovered that, no, actually, I'm within 13, missing card number 60 as well. Nobody of significance. I've, I've got everybody who is important in the card set. You know, you've already seen uh, Favre. There's, there's Elway. We've got Dan Marino, uh, Joe Montana. Um, believe it or not, there's an Emmett Smith card in the set. Shocking, I know. And, oh, 14. For some reason, I blew completely past Dan McGuire. That explains why there was no 21. You guys probably figured that out and I totally missed it. But at any rate, I'm, I'm really puzzled why I've, I've made as many mistakes as I made. So I'm missing 14 cards. Still, I, I did look at the actual holes that I identified and I didn't notice anybody of, of significance in there. But, um, but yeah, that was uh, uh, totally thrown off now. So, okay, at any rate. Um, as far as the set goes, I'm missing uh, what apparently apparently has now reached 14 cards that are missing. Um, I, I love this card set, the way that it looks. And going through the packs, the cards did stick together, but they, and to, to the point where pulling them apart was a little nervous at times, none of the cards got damaged. There, was, there were a couple of cases where you might see a little bit of gold foil show up on the card on the back side 
I don't think that, uh, probably not gonna see it. Okay, so right here on Howie Long, there's just a little nick of gold foil, but you don't see, other than maybe seeing a little bit of that, there was no other damage that I saw on any of the cards in this entire box. So that meant that it was just a clean, moving toward a, a set and getting a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of doubles. And again, the cards just look really cool. So that is, the, the thing is, for me, this is one of those, those gems that people just overlook. I loved going through this to the extent that I'm considering getting another box simply to finish this, and that's the only reason. I already have the set, I don't need another one, but I just wanna go through opening up another box just because it was a lot of fun, I did enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's, obviously, I have a pretty good amount of praise for this card set, and I wish that people, more people knew about it, but that means that it's still kind of sitting around undiscovered uh, to be enjoyed. And so, after I get my box, I advise, uh, I, I highly recommend um, considering getting one simply because I think it really is a, a cool experience to go through and a great card set to have. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Wow, they are loud.